Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanasafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lanasafarms.com or give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below. Today we're kicking off our Handy Tips series talking about small square bales. These videos are made for people just like you, and if there's a video that you would like to see or a question that you would like answered, feel free to contact us. Don't forget to subscribe, and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about small square bales. Ah, small square bales. Now some people, they've got lots of money and they've got lots of time and they have all kinds of fancy equipment for handling their bales, but the reality is, is most of you watching these videos are going to be handling them by hand. So let's talk about small square bales. What's going on here? Am I just stacking these in just a random pattern? Uh, and what am I using to help make this job easier? That's what we're going to talk about. Small square bales. Uh, these are the staple of the hobby farm. Whether you're getting straw, hay, uh, doesn't matter. Usually you're going to be getting them in small squares. So a small square, it's usually tied with twine. Back in the day, some of them used to be tied with wire, um, but you don't see that very often anymore. Most of them are tied with two, um, pieces of twine and if you cut them open and break them open what you'll find is they're actually made of what we uh, call flakes. Average bale will have 12 to 14 flakes in it and what a flake is and you'll see here in a little bit is is just kind of a, a small batch of hay that's squeezed into this bale. Again small square bales it's usually what most farmers will use, uh, most hobby farmers will, you, will use. They're easy to stack um, they're easy to handle and it makes life a little bit easier for you. Large round bales, large square bales, that's great if you're a big time producer. Um, but reality is, is for those of you out there that are small scale, this is going to be what you're going to deal with all the time. Now, there's a right way to deal with small square bales and there's a wrong way to deal with small square, square bales and most of you are probably dealing with them somewhere in the middle. We're going to talk about a few tips and tricks and about small squares themselves today to help you get a better handle on what exactly it is that you're doing. So here's your typical hay bale. I just wanted to give you guys a close up to explain to you a little bit more um, what I was talking about as far as the flakes are concerned. So when you cut when these bales open, if you pull your string back and you look, see how this bale falls apart into these sections here? Each one of those sections is a flake, is what we refer to as a flake. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So roughly 12 flakes in this bale. Um, depending on the material, sometimes you can get more, sometimes you can get less. Just to give you a rough idea of how much hay we burned through here, uh, we burned through approximately uh, one flake per head per day of our animals. Um, that is the absolute bare minimum that we feed our animals, one flake per head per day. Um, and given the breeding stock that we have up here at the uh, lambing and kidding barns right now we're going through um, anywhere from uh, five to six bales a day depending on the number of animals that we have currently um, we've pushed quite a few and we are at about three to four bales per day so there it is this is a hay hook um, or a bale hook as you can see we've got a handle on one end and a fairly sharp point on the other. Um, it's not sharp enough that it's gonna cut you or anything, but uh, it could definitely do some damage to you if you were to get crazy with it. Whoops. Um, so the this point with a little bit of force, you can stick that into a bale and uh, move it around. 
So there it is, just to give you an idea, the size of it, here's my hand. Um, and then it gives you a pretty good idea of, of what the overall uh, size of this thing is. Not too big, um, but just enough to add a good bit of reach to your hand and allow you to hook into these bales. So take a moment to notice how I'm stacking the bales. Now this may seem simple to some of you, but it still is noteworthy. First of all, I'm stacking them on wooden pallets. This allows airflow underneath and allows the bales to breathe. Also, sitting on concrete, sometimes concrete can sweat. You'll also notice that I'm changing the orientation of the bales. Two of them go one way, two of them go another. This helps to add strength and stability to the pile and can prevent injury from a fall of bales. So you notice when I'm grabbing my bales, I want to grab from the ends like this with my hook. The way the flakes are stacked in here, you can easily grab from the end like that and it'll hold your hook. If you start grabbing from the side like this, chances are you're gonna slip between a flake and you're not gonna be able to grab it. Like I said, you can see these flakes are stacked this way. So when I'm carrying long distances, I like to hook in from the side here and grab my twine, press it up against my body. It allows a more comfortable pull. You can also grab from the top. Um, it just tends to put a little bit more load on one arm than the other. So I find that the best way to grab is sticking it aside like that, and then just go ahead and carry it. Now when I get to my stack, you can see I alternate my bales. I have these bales running this way, these bales running this way. If I get to the end and I'm having a hard time reaching, I can always grab my bale from the end like this and I can actually rest it up against my body and it gives me some leverage to toss that bale upward I need it. Here's a short little video showing how I use the bail hook. You can see my dominant hand has the hook, my non-dominant hand has the second string, and I'm using my body to help hold that bail up against me. Again, watch, dominant right hand, non-dominant left hand, grab that string, grab the hook, and use my body to carry the bail. Makes life a lot easier. Now what you'll see up here, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna kind of move some bales around using that bail hook. As long as you're working against the flakes, it'll help to move those bales around quite easily. And here in a second, you're gonna see I'm gonna reach up and actually pull a bale out. See, way easier than doing it just strictly by hand. Well, we appreciate you watching our videos. Please check out our other videos. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time. Now, you can check us out online and see what's going on on the farm every day. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We are on Instagram. And hey, by the way, not too late to subscribe. It really, really helps us out when you subscribe to our channel. So please consider it if you haven't already done so. So the music you're listening to is Aaron Copeland. If you haven't heard of Aaron Copeland, um, it's okay, I forgive you, but you need to check out some of his music, some of the greatest music of the 20th century, uh, things like Fanfare for the Common Man and Appalachian Spring. Your life will be more fulfilled if you listen to him. So this is Rodeo, um, Hoedown, by Aaron Copeland. If it doesn't make you want to eat beef, I I, I don't know what will. Uh, that was a little pun because it's a famous uh, song that goes along with a beef commercial. But anyways, just want to give my uh, well wishes to the Aaron Copeland fans out there.